Do you have an ugly, unfinished pole just taking up space in your basement that the inspector said was critical? Well, today we're gonna to see if we can transform this old thing into an architectural design feature, at least according to their advertising material, using the pole wrap solution available at your local hardware store. Let's jump right into it with materials. Today we're dealing with a three inch pole. So we've got the three to three and a half inch pole wrap here. They also come in four inch diameters. Along with the wrap itself, we have a cap and base set to finish it off nicely. Other materials you're gonna be needing for this project include an abrasive material to clean the pole before applying adhesive. I have steel wool and sandpaper here. You'll need a measuring tape and preferably a pencil to mark it with. Some type of saw to cut the pole wrap itself. I have a miter saw ready to go out in the garage. A utility knife cock gun and some type of adhesive. I have liquid nails, masking tape, and this is according to the instructions that pole wrap gives. We're gonna see how the masking tape solution works. Uh, just stay tuned. And then depending on what type of finish you want, I have a stain to match the trim in this basement, uh, along with a polyurethane. I'm gonna apply the stain with a rag and the polyurethane with a foam brush. And then we have mineral spirits to clean up uh, once we're all finished. Step one is to prep the pole by removing anything that could interfere with the adhesive. So I see my first potential issue. There's these little knobs poking out at the bottom. That's gonna be covered up by the base cap. So when I measure, I'm gonna go from the top of that and just take the pole wrap down to there. And then the caps will cover, cover that portion up when you've got both of them on there. Step two will be measuring and marking, then cutting the pole wrap itself. Step three, we're gonna be cutting the width to match the diameter of the pole. To do this, we're gonna take the piece, the scrap piece that we cut, you may notice that there is a full edge and a half cut edge. So we're gonna put the full edge down against the pole and mark the first seam that overlaps. That is where we're gonna be cutting. The little bit of overlap is gonna allow the uh, adhesive some room to be squeezed into there. We will make sure that we're lined up on the same side. We got the both cut sides here, so we're lined up on that edge. I'm gonna take the utility knife and just go right down that seam. And finally, we're gonna go through and bend each one of these seams, getting it prepared. Step four, we'll be placing the adhesive on the pole wrap at 10 to 12 inch increments and all around the edges. Uh, you can see that I've placed one of the caps underneath to have some separation up off those knobs. Once we have it on the pole itself, the instructions say we can just wrap masking tape around it and should hold while it cures. We'll see how this goes, I guess. So, unfortunately, I missed the part of actually setting it on the pole itself, but it was pretty smooth once the adhesive started touching, you know, kind of grabbed. I probably could apply it a little bit more adhesive, uh, but I'm sure once it sets up, some of that give will, you know, uh, be gone. So, we're going to let that set up overnight and uh, get back to it tomorrow. One thing I did want to point out is that after I had that set on the pole, I did take a utility knife and run it through the seam where some of the adhesive had popped out just to get that cleaned up right away. So at this point, I'm letting it set up overnight and next steps five and six, I guess we're on at this point, I'll be applying a stain, which is optional, and then a polyurethane, which is typically going to be recommended for this. 
I could go ahead and install the basin cap if I wanted to at this point. It's actually what pull wrap recommends, but instead I think it's gonna be easier to apply this really dark walnut stain uh, onto the basin cap separately in order to avoid any, you know, getting it onto the brand new floors we just installed. So next you'll be seeing me do that. And then to wrap it up, step seven, we'll be applying adhesive. They say to do it on the bottom. I, I might just do it on the inside. We'll see how that goes. I'd rather not apply it directly to the flooring, but if I need to, we will. To wrap up the video, I'll give my brief review of the installation process. And also we can break down quickly the costs of uh, putting this project together. See you tomorrow. I found that for the staining and polyurethane, I had to apply it with a brush to get in between all of the wood pieces into those V grooves. I would work my way halfway around the pole before going back and wiping down the previous section. It seemed to work well for timing and getting an even coat with the stain. Staining is optional, uh, but applying a polyurethane is definitely recommended. I applied one coat of polyurethane, which I don't show here, uh, before putting the product together. And then after this video, I'm gonna apply a second, second coat of polyurethane. And I'm glad that I did wait uh, to stain in polyurethane the cap and base before applying them. Otherwise, it would have been really difficult to get uh, next to the floor uh, and get it looking nice and even. There is a small gap between the trim and the pole itself, so I wasn't able to adhere the trim directly to the pole, but I did have to put it directly on the floor. In the instructions, they say to use tape to hold together the cap and base pieces while they set. I didn't find that to be necessary. And here we are at the final product. Overall, I'm very happy. The cost of this total project for me, and it's gonna change depending on what tools you have and what other supplies you already have. But for the pole wrap itself, for the three and three and a half inch, it was $80. Now, so $80 for the pole wrap, and then the cap and base was $65 for those trim pieces. They do sell a cup holder that you can put on as well, uh, which can also cover a seam for taller poles. I'm not sure how much that costs. It's probably expensive. I'll, I'll throw it up on the screen. I used Liquid Nails Fuse It, a little bit more expensive at $9. The stain and polyurethane that I used was $23 for a total project cost of 177. Compared to boxing in the poll, it, that's definitely probably a, a third of the price. Assembly, the instructions were easy to follow. I hope these instructions help you guys if, if you decide to tackle this yourself as well. And overall the product, I'm happy with it. It was easy, saved a lot of headache. And if you've got a poll to wrap up, I'd recommend it. Hit the like button to let me know if you found this video helpful. And here's some other videos.